Jamestown was the first permanent English settlement in North America and established a foothold for the English in the New World. After Columbus's Spanish ships arrived in the Western Hemisphere in 1492, the Spanish, as the first European power on the scene, established itself as the dominant force in the Americas by 1609. England wanted to get a piece of the action on the world stage and eventually challenged Spain for supremacy in the New World. There were big profits to be had in the New World and Britain was running a hundred years late. King James issued the charter for a Virginia company to create a new colony in the mid-Atlantic coast in 1606. The Virginia Company set sail to the New World on three small ships on December 20th, 1606, with just over 100 men, four boys, and no women. One of the biggest mistakes of the Jamestown settlers was to underestimate and to misunderstand the people already in the area. The charter gave the settlers rights to the land in the area. This is, of course, ignoring the fact that these lands were already in use by native peoples. Part of the charter was also to bring the infidels and savages living in those parts to human civility, and to a settled and quiet government. If this sounds boastful and arrogant to you, you are not wrong. The Chesapeake region of North America was ruled by a confederacy of tribes united under one leader called the Powhatan. A confederacy which existed in what became Virginia was a loosely affiliated group of tribes made up of 15,000 people who occupied roughly 8,000 square miles of land, so roughly the land size of New Hampshire. One of the first problems with Jamestown was the location choice. They chose a low-lying island surrounded by malarial swamps on what would eventually be called the James River. This ended up being a terrible spot to farm, a great spot to catch malaria, and a great spot for not much else. Of the 100 or so settlers who arrived originally, most of them knew absolutely nothing about farming. Half were gentlemen, part of the aristocracy in England, and the other half were beggars and homeless who had either nothing better to do or were sent to Virginia by force. This was not the makings for a great community. Of the 100 or so settlers who first arrived in Jamestown, only 38 were alive nine months later. John Smith quickly assented to leadership in the colony and stuck around for the first two years of Jamestown's infancy, actually doing a decent job considering what he was working with. The work ethic of the settlers was a constant frustration for Smith, as he often complained that most of them would rather starve than work. Arriving in April, it would have been a perfect time to plant crops to be ready for the upcoming winter, but that was not the case. The colonists were so concerned with finding gold, they did not prepare themselves for harsh times. The colony was only able to survive on what they had already brought and getting lucky trading with the Powhatan Indians. As time went on, and right after Smith returned to England, things became horrifying for the Jamestown settlers. Food ran out in the winter of 1609-1610 in a period which came to be known as the Starving Time. The settlers ate rats, snakes, and then their boots and horses. Eventually, they would dig up the bodies of the already dead and consume those as well. One man was even executed for killing and eating his pregnant wife. At the beginning of the winter of 1609, Jamestown had 220 colonists. By the spring, only 60 remained. After such a terrible experience, the remaining settlers decided to pack up and return home. It had been three years and the Jamestown experiment was a failure. As supplies and food were always running low, there were often supply missions sent back to Virginia. The company was frustrated with Smith for not seeing a return on their investment, to which Smith had earlier replied with a letter asking for supplies and men who would actually work. The folks in London must have taken it to heart because they sent a lot of supplies back. The response supply fleet included seven well-equipped and well-armed ships, containing at least 500 settlers. The flagship of that fleet is the ship named the Sea Venture. The fleet left England on June 2nd of 1609, so before the starving time. On July 24th of the journey, the Sea Venture and the rest of the fleet ran into a dreadful and hideous storm. The storm is described by the passengers as fury added to fury, and one storm urging a second more outrageous than the other, and that it beat all light from heaven, filling everyone with horror and fear. One of the smaller ships on the fleet went down in the hurricane, never to be found. Five of the other ships fought the hurricane, won, and continued on their journey just in time to take part in the starving time. Congrats! You survived the hurricane. Welcome to the starving time. As for the Sea Venture, after four nights and three days of fighting with this storm, finally Admiral George Summers spot land. The Sea Venture found its way to a random island, Bermuda, in the Atlantic, uninhabited by humans up to that point. This terrible storm that seemed to be a curse on the people of the Sea Venture turned out to be a blessing. 
The crew and settlers spent the next nine months living off the island. It turns out the local Bermuda cedar trees are excellent for shipbuilding, and the settlers constructed two ships to take them the remaining way to Virginia. Setting sail for Virginia on May 11, 1610, and arrived at the Jamestown settlement on the 23rd. Just in time to meet the remaining Jamestown settlers, the very ones who had survived the starving time and were headed back to England to give up. So, they totally missed the starving time. If they had showed up earlier, they would have just died during the starving time. If they showed up later, then Jamestown completely fails, goes under, never to be resurrected in all probability. It is one of those huge what-ifs of history. Virginia becomes one of the one or two most important of the 13 colonies, probably the, the most influential. Think of all the possible historical differences if Jamestown doesn't last, but it did survive. The Sea Venture castaways gave Jamestown a reboot. More people, more women, more farmers, more supplies, tobacco seeds. And even though they had a few setbacks coming up, the Tidewater region of North America becomes the most influential of the entire East Coast.